My name is Shi Yang. I'm an assistant professor at the Department of Environmental Sciences in, uh, at University of Virginia. And uh, our lab, Plant Ecology and Remote Sensing Lab, is we're interested in how climate impacts vegetation and how in return vegetation's activities feed back to the climate. I, I'm basically interested in climate vegetation interactions. How does the climate affect our vegetation? How do vegetation respond to climate? And photosynthesis is actually the largest uh, CO2 flux uh, in the ecosystem. And uh, ironically, we don't have a good estimation of the temporal and spatial variation of uh, photosynthesis, especially after it goes beyond the leaf scale. It's really hard to measure it. So that inspired me to think about, is there a good way to measure photosynthesis effectively? Um, and solar induced fluorescence is the, one of the major tools we use in our lab to try to answer that question. Yeah. So GPP is the largest CO2 flux in the ecosystem. By understanding GPP, it can help you to do a lot of things. Farmers can use it to estimate the crop yield, which is a very important thing for them to understand. It can actually affect our ability for weather forecasting. So when plants um, absorb carbon dioxide, water gets emitted from the plants. And that water flux coming to from the plant is actually a very big flux that will affect the precipitation pattern, things like that. And so if we can actually capture a spatial variation of GPP accurately, in the future we have the potential to better um, uh, improve our uh, weather forecasting capacity. Some satellite data in starting from 2011 have shown that there is a globally there is a relationship between solar induced fluorescence and GPP very well correlated and our study published in 2015 show, is the first study um, on the ground that shows uh, the continuous measurement of solar induced fluorescence actually correlate very well with the GPP uh, measured from the conventional eddy currents measurement. Since our study, I think there are more, as I said, more and more study and supporting our findings and on the, from the leaf level, from the canopy level, and uh, from the satellite level. So in our 2015 work, we have shown that the satellite measurement of solar induced fluorescence from satellite called GOM2 uh, match pretty well with what we measure on the ground. And we have been building uh, a network of solar induced fluorescence measurements um, across the globe in different ecosystems from Arctic tundra to uh, decidu temperate deciduous forest to crop and uh, try to get an understanding um, whether there's also a good relationship between CIF uh, measured on the ground and satellite in different type of ecosystems. In Europe, there's a satellite mission called FLEX, and uh, European Space Agency is uh, supporting that work. And uh, in the United States, NASA is a major supporter of uh, uh, any satellite and ground-based solar induced fluorescence related work. In the future, we're planning to use a spectrometer to monitor the forest at a larger scale and from multiple angles. So that's a, uh, one direction we're taken. And another direction we're taking is to uh, install the instrument on the drone and um, to cover a larger spatial area. So those are the refinements we're working on. And like you said, we hope we can provide new scientific insights into those uh, areas.